Logan Paul says he actually felt the wrath of God after mocking the Christian faith. And United States women's national soccer star Megan Rapino is injured six minutes into the final game of her career. And she claims that this is proof that God does not exist. As we look at different people who have mocked God and how God just might have dealt with them almost immediately. What happens when famous people mock God? I made some pretty, uh, he's gonna go pretty out of line go comments cry. to George about George's beliefs. And I said, uh, I'm not going to say what I said. I'm not even going there again because I'll tell you why. The following three weeks have been the hardest period <laughs> of my life. Buddy, God kicked me in the as hard as he could. There, there is there. It's soon we call that a happening. God smack. I you went, got I went, God smack. I went. Son. There's no way. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 um, mm. ironically, I defamed Jesus and God, and I felt His wrath. <clears throat> and by the way, I want, I want to make something clear. I'm not an atheist. I believe in God. People think I, I, I don't, I don't believe in God. I might not identify as the same God as, as you, but um. It was just, it was very telling to me how the karmic energy of the universe, this is what I'll call it, just went right back around and, and put me in my place. Now, something that is interesting, obviously he talks about karma there and the universe and so forth. And that's what people want to do because truth be told, uh, it is a suppression of truth and unrighteousness. As Romans chapter 1 tells us, instead of giving the creator his due, uh, people want to give creation, the things that God has created, including the universe. Uh, they want to give the things that should be attributed to God to the universe. But nonetheless, something he says is that he felt the wrath of God for the first time. But actually, this is what the Bible describes. In one of the most popular chapters in all of Scripture, one of the most popular statements in all of Scripture, is the fact that Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But later on in that same chapter, one of the things that he mentions there in verse 36 of chapter 3 of John's Gospel is this. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. You see, if somebody is not a believer in Jesus Christ, the wrath of God currently abides on them right now. And I think what we see in the culture today, whether it is the depression and all of um, the pharmacaea that needs to be used to suppress the feelings that so many people have, uh, the truth is, or alcohol or whatever drugs people are using or all the different things they put in their life to try to numb themselves to the reality that they will die one day, uh, a lot of that is because the wrath of God currently abides on them. They don't have the joy of the Lord. They haven't had their sins forgiven. They're not bought and paid for and walking in that joy and that strength and having the eternal hope of the glory of Jesus Christ. And so that's something that is on them continuously, even if they are suppressing it or not feeling it uh, in terms of actually understanding what's going on. Something else that really stuck out to me, and I've seen this clip another number of times, and these are not my words, these are the words of comedian Andrew Schultz, who is not a blood-bought believer by any means, but he has some, I guess you could say, an interesting take when it comes to the famous Christopher Hitchens, and not only some of his, uh, some of the books that he wrote, but also what it looked like at the end of his life. There's this other guy named Christopher Hitchens. I don't know if you guys have heard of Christopher Hitchens. He wrote a book called God Is Not Great, which they sell at the airport. Just could do with that information what you want, okay? I saw a guy buying that at the airport. I went up to him, I was like, arrival or departure, homie? I need to know if you're going to my city, so I gotta buy three Bibles to balance this whole out. Anyway, so Christopher Hitchens, what he would do for a living, he would, he would go around the world giving speeches about how God doesn't exist. And then he died recently. And you want to know what he died from? Vocal cord cancer. <laughs> that sounds a lot like God going, Shh. But Voltaire and Hitchens and Logan Paul are not the only ones who have made quips. And some take longer and the hereafter, but some immediately are dealt with. I don't mean to brag, I don't care, but I want you to know, double-vaxxed, booster, flu shot, 
And I'm going to be honest, I have the shingle shot too. And I still get my period. What? Yes. Traveled, went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets, never got clearly. Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. Comedian Heather McDonald is out of a Valley Hospital tonight after she collapsed over the weekend during a show at the Tempe Improv. She spoke with Team 12's Colleen Socorro today about the frightening tumble. And Colleen, how is she doing? She's doing better. Heather McDonald says she stayed at St. Joseph's Hospital over the weekend as they ran tests to figure out what happened here Saturday night at the Tempe Improv. She says they don't really know why she collapsed three minutes into her act. In front of Saturday night's crowd. I love the crowd there and I was just like excited to do it. So. Celebrity comedian Heather McDonald ready to deliver an evening of material at Tempe Improv. When it happened, I just I just couldn't believe it. Just a few jokes in. I was starting to feel like dizzy weird and I was like, wow, this better pass soon. I don't know how I'm going to power through this hour and 10 minutes of material. She says it wasn't alcohol or her management saying she suffered a skull fracture in the fall. Well, Heather McDonald is not the only one to have, sadly, a head injury uh, when mocking God. In fact, Lady Gaga was hit on the head during a performance of the song Judas, in which she not only mocks Christ, but also even sings the lyric, Judas is the demon I cling to. And not only Lady Gaga, but some artists, not just getting hit in the head, have met their ultimate demise after mocking Christ, mocking the fact that we can have eternal life, and even going to the side of Satan. For example, Bon Scott, who sang the song Highway to Hell as the former frontman of ACDC, sang, Hey Satan, paying my dues, playing in a rockin' band. Hey mama, look at me, I'm on my way to the promised land. I'm on the highway to hell, highway to hell. But sadly enough, Bon Scott would be taken to King's College Hospital in Camberwell, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The official report of the coroner concluded that Scott had died of acute alcohol poisoning and classified it as, quote, death by misadventure. Not only Bon Scott, which was one of the biggest bands of all time in ACDC, but also probably the biggest band of all time, the Beatles, John Lennon, the front man for the Beatles, who once joked that they were more popular than Jesus and that he would be proven right in that estimation, also met an untimely end when the killer, Mark David Chapman, shot him to death on December 8th, 1980. This is Megan Rapino, and she tore her Achilles, reportedly, six minutes into her last match. I'm most upset that I'm now just uh, a NARP, a normal regular person having to do rehab, <laughs> which is <laughs> devastating. I'm sure if any of you guys have, if any of you NARPs have had an injury, it's terrible. You have to like do your job and, you know, go to rehab. And this is a long one. Although I'm, I'm going to get the Aaron Rodgers treatment, whatever that is. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be calling him or whoever did his surgery because we need to speed this up. But yeah, I thought about it a little bit. I mean, you know, I'm not a religious person or anything. And if there was a God, like, this is proof that there isn't, because it's f***ed up. Um, so, yeah, it just, it's just f***ed up, you guys. Like, it's just six minutes in, and eat my Achilles. I mean, what's... Her mocking God and a lot of people mocking God uh, is actually evidence of God. Uh, in fact, the scriptures prophesy that this would be prevalent in the last days. Peter said in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 3, Know that you should know this that in the last days mockers will arise, come with their mockings, and uh, will follow after their own lust. And Jude says a very similar thing. Actually, he refers, he's referring back to what Peter is saying there, I believe, in uh, the book of Jude, uh, verses chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Uh, he says, uh, You should know that, you know, uh, that the apostles prophesied uh, that beforehand uh, that mockers would arise, walking after their own lot, lust in the last times, and, and he says their own ungodly lust. And, basically repeats what Peter says. And we're seeing that right now. And, you know, a lot of people have quipped her being injured because that she's a flamboyant, unrepentant lesbian and her mocking God and being injured. A lot of people are saying that's evidence that there is a God, you know? And I would say, you know what? The evidence basically is a fulfillment of prophecy.